Consider this problem. If we mix two samples of water at different temperatures, what's going to be the final temperature of the mixture? So let's say if we have 50 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to pour some hot water to it. Let's say the hot water is at 90 degrees Celsius. When these two are mixed, what's going to be the final temperature? Now we know the final temperature has to be somewhere between 25 and 90. Now, if you average those two numbers, if you add them up and divide by two, the average is 57.5 degrees Celsius. So here's a question for you. Will the final temperature be 57.5? Will it be between 25 and 57.5? Or will it be between 57.5 and 90? What would you say? Now, if the masses of these two samples of water, if they were equal, then the final temperature will be right in the middle. But they're not equal. The cold water sample, uh, we have 50 grams of that, and we have 100 grams of the hot water sample. So because we have more of the hot water sample, the final temperature is going to be greater than 57.5, but less than 90. It's going to be closer to this temperature. So once we pour this in, we're going to get a final temperature of something above 57.5. So let's go ahead and find out what exactly that temperature is going to be. Now, heat energy is going to flow from the hot water sample to the cold water sample. So the amount of heat energy that's released from the hot water sample will be equal to the heat energy that's absorbed by the cold water sample, assuming there are no heat losses in this problem. Because sometimes heat can be radiated off into the environment, so we're going to ignore uh, those effects. Now, the hot water releases heat energy, so therefore it's exothermic, and the cold water absorbs heat energy, so it's endothermic. Now, a negative value does not equal a positive value. So to make this equation work out, we need to put a negative sign on one side of the equation. It could be on the left side or on the right side. That doesn't matter. So this is how you set up a typical heat transfer problem. You need to identify where or what substance is absorbing heat and which substance is releasing heat. So you have to map out the transfer of heat energy before you can come up with an equation. So Q is equal to mc delta t. On the left, the mass of the hot water sample is 100 grams. The specific heat capacity is 4.184. And the change in temperature, which is final minus initial, we don't know the final temperature, but we know the initial temperature of the hot water sample is 90. Now the mass of the cold water sample is 50. The heat capacity is the same. That is the specific heat capacity. And delta T is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature of 25. So the first thing we should do is divide both sides by 4.184 to cancel those two terms. Next, let's distribute negative 100 to TF minus 90. So we're going to have negative 100 times TF and negative 100 times negative 90. That's positive 9,000. On the right, this is going to be 50 times TF and 50 times negative 25 is negative 1250. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add 100 TF to both sides and I'm going to simultaneously add 1250 to both sides. Nine thousand plus twelve fifty is ten thousand two hundred fifty, and fifty plus a hundred is one fifty. So to calculate the final temperature, it's going to be ten thousand two fifty divided by one fifty. So the final temperature is sixty-eight point three degrees Celsius.
And as predicted, this is greater than 57.5 degrees Celsius. So this temperature is closer to 90 than it is to 25. Let's move on to number two. 40 grams of aluminum at 170 degrees Celsius was mixed with 50 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius in a styrofoam cup. What is the final temperature of the mixture? Now the purpose of the styrofoam cup is to provide insulation. It prevents heat from being radiated from inside the cup to the outside environment. So it reduces the loss of heat energy to the environment. Now, heat is going to flow from the aluminum metal to water. The temperature of the aluminum metal is 170 degrees Celsius, and the temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. So once we place the aluminum metal in the water, enclosed by the styrofoam cup, heat is going to flow from hot to cold. It's going to transfer from the aluminum metal to the water. So the setup is going to be the same. The heat released by the aluminum metal is equal to the heat absorbed by water. So on one side you want to put everything that's releasing heat and on the other side all the stuff that's absorbing heat energy. And don't forget to multiply one side of the equation by negative one. So we got negative m cat is equal to mc delta t. So the mass of the aluminum metal is 40. The specific heat capacity is 0.89. And delta t is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature of 170. And the mass of water is 50. The specific heat capacity is 4.184. And delta t is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature of 20. So go ahead and pause the video and feel free to work out this problem. Now what I'm going to do is multiply these two numbers first. Negative 40 times 0.89 is negative 35.6. Next, I'm going to multiply 50 by 4.184. And so that's 209.2. Now on the left, I'm going to distribute this number to TF minus 170. So I'm going to have negative 35.6 times TF and negative 35.6 times negative 170. That's positive 6,052. And this is going to equal 209.2 times TF and 209.2 times negative 20, that's negative 4,184. So I'm going to add 35.6 TF to both sides. And then I'm going to add 4,184 to both sides. Sixty fifty two plus forty one eighty four is ten thousand two hundred and thirty six, and two hundred nine point two plus thirty five point six is two hundred forty four point eight times TF. So TF is going to be ten thousand two hundred thirty six divided by two forty four point eight, and so you should get a final answer of forty one point eight degrees Celsius. And so that's it for this problem. So this is going to be the last question in this tutorial. Feel free to try it if you want to. So we have 100 grams of iron metal at 500 degrees Celsius, and it's added to 200 grams of water at 12 degrees Celsius. Now the mixture is going to be held by a metal pot. So the water is already inside of the metal pot, and then the iron metal is added to it. What is the final temperature of the mixture? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the metal pot. And so we have water already in the metal pot. So both the water and the metal pot is at 12 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to take a chunk of iron metal 
which is at 500 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to add it inside the water mixture. So heat is going to flow in two locations. It's going to flow to the water, and some of the heat energy is going to flow towards the metal pot. So you have to take that into account. We're given the heat capacity of this metal pot. So how can we set up the equation? Because we have three things we need to take into account. The heat energy released has to equal the heat energy absorbed. And don't forget to add the negative sign. So the only substance that is released in heat energy is iron metal. Now the substances that are absorbing heat energy is the water plus the metal pot, which I'm just going to use M for metal. So therefore, we have negative M cat is equal to M cat plus, what should we write for this equation? Should it be MC delta T again, or should it be something else? Now, the reason why we need to multiply, or the reason why that Q is MC delta T is because we're given the specific heat capacity. Notice that it has the units grams and Celsius. So in order to get joules, we got to multiply C by the mass in grams and the, the change in temperature in Celsius. Now the metal pot, we don't have the specific heat capacity. Rather, we have the heat capacity. Notice that we don't have the units grams in this, uh, in this term. So therefore, the equation that's going to help us to calculate QM is just going to be C delta T because there's no grams in heat capacity. You have it in specific heat capacity and within the units, but not for heat capacity. So if you're dealing with heat capacity, Q is just C delta T. If you're dealing with specific heat capacity, Q is MC delta T. And if you're dealing with molar heat capacity, Q is going to be N for moles times C times delta T. So let's go ahead and finish this problem. So the mass of iron metal is 100 grams. The specific heat capacity is 0.45. And the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is 500 in the case of iron metal. Now the mass of water is 200, the specific heat capacity is 4.184, and the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature of 12. And then we have the heat capacity of the metal pot, which is 150 joules per Celsius, times delta T, which is the final temperature, minus the initial temperature of 12. The metal pot and the water exist at the same initial temperature. So now... All we need to do is just some algebra. So negative 100 times 0.45 is negative 45. 200 times 4.184 is 836.8. Now I'm going to distribute 150 to TF minus 12. So that's 150 TF, and 150 times negative 12 is negative 1800. Now let's do the same here. So I'm going to have negative 45 times TF, and then negative 45 times negative 500 is positive 22,500. And then let's distribute that number to TF minus 12. So this is going to be 836.8 times TF and 836.8 times negative 12 is negative 10,041.6. So now let's combine like terms. So 836.8 plus 150, that's going to be 986.8 times TF. 
and then we have these two numbers to combine. So that's negative 11,841.6. And so that's equal to negative 45 times TF plus 22,500. So I'm going to add this to both sides. And then I'm going to add this number to both sides as well. Twenty two thousand five hundred plus eleven thousand eight four one point six. That's thirty four thousand three hundred forty one point six. And so nine eighty six point eight plus forty five is 1031.8 times TF. So the final temperature is this number divided by 1031.8. So the final temperature is going to be 33.3 degrees Celsius. And that's it. Now I just want to review something. If you need to calculate the heat absorbed or released due to a temperature change, and if you're given the specific heat capacity, you want to use this equation, where Cs represents the specific heat capacity. If you're given the molar heat capacity, use this equation. So keep in mind, m is the mass, usually in grams, and n is the moles. Now, if you're given simply heat capacity, not specific or molar heat capacity, then use this equation. Q is simply C times delta T. And in the end, the units tell you what type of capacity do you have. If you're dealing with specific heat capacity, the units is going to be joules per gram per Celsius. If you're dealing with molar heat capacity, the units is going to be joules per mole per Celsius. Now you might see Kelvin instead of Celsius, so it's going to be the same. When you're dealing with a change in temperature, the difference in Kelvin and Celsius is equivalent. Now the units for heat capacity will simply be joules per Celsius. You're not going to see grams or moles. And so by looking at the units, you can tell which of these three equations you need to use.